Hello, I'm Simon Whistler, you're watching Top 10's Net, and in the video today we're looking at the top 10 facts about the deadliest war of the 19th century. Number 10. The First Opium War An important event leading up to the Taiping Rebellion started back in the 1700s and early 1800s. At that time, the British loved exports from China, like silk, porcelain, and tea. China, on the other hand, didn't need a whole lot in the way of imports. They were fairly self-sufficient, and Europeans weren't allowed inside the borders. However, one thing that the people of China did like was opium, which the British transported from India to China. Of course, the Chinese rulers, the Qing dynasty, didn't love the fact that the British were shipping in drugs that made their citizens addicts. In March 1839, some Chinese villagers destroyed 1,400 tons of British-imported opium. The Qing dynasty then refused to hand over the offending parties, and this angered the British. A few months after the opium was destroyed, the British launched an offensive on China. Despite being vastly outnumbered, the British won after occupying the city of Nanjing. The war officially came to an end on August 29, 1842. As part of their loss, the British claimed possession of Hong Kong Island. China also had to pay a large indemnity, and they were forced to open up five ports for British trade. The defeat was a terrible embarrassment to the Qing dynasty, and it was a huge motivator for the Taiping Rebellion, which was led by a man who made an unusual claim about himself. Number 9. The leader of the rebellion claimed he was the younger brother of Jesus. Hong Shi Kuang, who was born in 1814, was a schoolteacher who studied Confucianism and tried to pass the civil service test, but he kept failing. After failing for the final time, Hong fell into a deep depression and experienced a vision where he visited a man in the sky who was tall, had a long beard, and a thick belt. The man in the sky told Hong to return to Earth to rid the world of demons. A short time after the vision, Hong was given a translated copy of the New Testament and thought that the man in the sky he visited was God. Hong then developed a system of belief based on Christianity, which also had a political component to it that was a primitive type of communism. A friend of Hong, Feng Yung Shan, used Hong's idea and formed a religious group called the God Worshippers Society, which would later become the Taiping Tianguo Dynasty, Heavenly Kingdom of Great Peace. After studying with a Christian missionary for two years, Hong took the title of Tiang Wang, Heavenly King. Below him were four kings based on the cardinal directions. Feng was given the title of South King, a man named Yang Shi Qing was given the East King, Wei Shang Hui was given the title of the North King, and Shi Chao Goi was proclaimed the West King. There was also a special position for Shi De Kai, one of the most literate people of the movement. He was given the title of Assistant King. Number 8. Their Beliefs the beliefs of the Taiping were based on the Old Testament, and God was to be obeyed and worshipped. Hong deemed that opium smoking, alcohol, gambling, and prostitution were all evil, as was anything from the Chinese culture, especially Confucianism. One interesting rule the Taiping dynasty had, which may not have been the best idea in the long run for running a dynasty, is that men and women had to be kept separate and sexual intercourse was banned even between married couples. However, the no-sex rule wasn't an absolute. People who were higher up in the dynasty, like the kings, had large sexual harems. Essentially, their stance on sex was the reverse of modern-day Catholicism. Number 7. Weapons when the Taiping movement got started, they consisted of poor peasants, so they didn't have the best access to weapons. Instead, they relied on their day jobs to create weapons. One valuable profession was miners because they could handle explosives and build bombs. One such bomb was called stink pots. They were a primitive type of hand grenade and were either used as an incendiary weapon or they could have been filled with poisonous gases that would suffocate an enemy. Miners were also helpful when the rebellion got to a city because they could make short work of the city's walls. Although access to firearms was difficult to come by for the Taiping movement, they did have access to guns like jingles, which were large muskets on stands. The problem was that they weren't very accurate, which is why many soldiers still used tartar bow and arrows, which were more accurate than even matchlock rifles. Finally, the Taiping army developed strong defenses. This included traps of sharpened bamboo, and they would use fireworks to scare or distract their enemies. Number 6. Tianjin, the Heavenly Capital of course, there were other problems facing peasants living in southern China other than losing to the British. After all, people don't just blindly follow a fanatic who spouts wild crap unless he or she is providing answers to serious problems they are experiencing. At the time, people in the south of China suffered through several famines and droughts, unemployment was high, and many peasants didn't own land. The problem was that over 400 million people lived in China at the time, so there simply wasn't enough land to go around. When Hong Shi Kuang and his followers came along, their promise of equal land ownership looked pretty tempting. So, despite their crazy rules, within four years the movement amassed a million soldiers. This included men and women troops. Now a massive army, they moved north, and on March 10, 1853, they captured the eastern city of Nanjing, and under their rule they renamed the city Tianjing, Heavenly Capital. 
During the siege, 30,000 Imperial soldiers and civilians were killed, but it was only the start of the mass deaths that happened during the rebellion. After capturing the city, they tried to take over Beijing and failed, but they did manage to achieve several victories in the upper Yangtze Valley. Number 5. The Rise of the East King Yang Shiquin. With a city and several small villages under their control, the people of Taiping lived in a utopian paradise, right? Well, since this was the deadliest war of the 19th century, it's safe to assume it didn't go well. The problem started in the lead-up to the Siege of Nanjing. Hong's second-in-command, Feng Yunshan, who was named the South King, had been demoted and then killed by a city guard on May 24, 1852, as they marched by a city that they had no intention of invading. Moving into second-of-command was the East King, Yang Shiquing. Yang was a former charcoal and firewood salesman with no military experience, yet he was made commander-in-chief and he strategized the troops for the successful invasion of Nanjing. After the invasion and the city was secured, Hong became less interested in politics and more interested in his harem. Yang then tried to use Hong's lack of leadership as a chance to usurp his power. However, Hong was becoming more paranoid and realized what Yang was up to. This made Hong fear for his life, so he ordered walls to be built around his house with cannons to defend them. He also ordered one of his generals, the North King, Wei Changhui, to return to Tianjing to kill Yang and his supporters. On September 1, 1856, Wei and a thousand of his troops arrived at Tianjing. There they went to Yang's house, where one of the soldiers stabbed him and his father to death. They then went on to slaughter thousands of his supporters that night and into the next day. The true number of victims has never been determined, however the killings didn't stop there, and Wei continued to root out more followers of Yang, leading to another massacre where 20 to 30,000 more people were killed. Number 4. The Problem with Wei Changhui After thousands of Yang's supporters were slaughtered, Hong decided that too many innocent people had died, so he ordered a decree that Wei and his generals should be flogged 400 times in public. The lashing was a big public spectacle, and since Wei and his generals were being punished for killing Yang supporters, Yang's remaining 5 to 6,000 supporters came out to see the flogging. That's when they were surprised by Hong's guards who turned on them. Another massacre ensued, while Yang's remaining followers were arrested and executed over the next three months. After the lashing, Wei took over in the place of Yang as second in command, and surprise, he wasn't a calm and reasonable leader. Wei was domineering and it didn't take long for him to lose support among the population, and in 1856, Hong had him executed. He was beheaded and dismembered. Wei's body was later chopped up and hung around the city as a warning not to disobey Hong. Wei was the last of the four kings to die. Without anyone to help him rule, Hong sent Wei's pickled head to the assistant king, Shi De Kai, who left the city because he opposed the massacre of Yang's people at the hands of Wei. She rejoined for a while, but in May 1857, she had become disillusioned with the Taiping movement, and he and his followers left Tianjing. She was given an offer by the Qing dynasty to come join them as a high-ranking official, but he turned them down because he wanted to start his own kingdom in western China. The Qing dynasty didn't approve of that, so he was captured and executed on June 25, 1863. Number 3. The Battle of Shanghai in 1861, almost ten years into the rebellion, a second opium war had just come to an end, and the Qing government was defeated again. The British, and this time the French, were now embedded in China more than ever, and this wasn't good news for the Taiping people. The Europeans did not like the fact that the Taiping belief system was a bastardized version of Christianity. When the Taiping army started to advance on Shanghai in early 1861, it made the Chinese businessmen and Europeans uneasy. However, the Europeans weren't all that interested in committing troops to fight the Taiping army despite their disdain. Instead, a group of businessmen hired American mercenary Frederick Townsend Ward, who gathered a group of a hundred Westerners who lived in China at the time, and called the group the Ever Victorious Army. They were able to head off the advancing Taiping army over the next three years. They cleared out their strongholds, which ultimately led to number 2. The Downfall of Taiping in March 1964, the Qing dynasty advanced on Tianjing. They were successful in overtaking the city in July 1864. Inside the palace, they found the heavenly king Hong Shi Kuang's decaying body. He apparently died either of natural causes or committed suicide by eating poisonous weeds on the 1st of June 1864. The Third Battle of Nanjing concluded with something that was familiar to the city when it was Taijing. That was another massacre. Over 100,000 people were killed over the course of three days, and the city fell in July 1864. Apparently, the people who were massacred, which was nearly the entire city of Tianjing, chose death instead of living under the Qing dynasty. Number 1. The Death Toll as we mentioned in the title, the Taiping Rebellion was the deadliest war of the 18th century. An estimated 20 million people were killed. On the low end, it was about 10 million, but other estimates put it closer to 100 million. 
Just for some perspective, the American Civil War, which started at the tail end of the Taiping Rebellion and was the war where most Americans lost their lives, had a death toll of 620,000 people. In fact, if you add up all American casualties across all their wars, it is 1.1 million, almost 10 times less than the lowest projected death toll of the Taiping Army. However, it's important to point out that many of these deaths were not caused by war. While there was still an overwhelming amount stemming from fighting and massacres, millions of deaths were caused by famines. During the fighting, troops on both sides ruined the soil during their travels and battles, meaning there wasn't enough land to grow food. So I really hope you found those facts about that war interesting. If you did, please do hit that thumbs up button below and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already for brand new videos just like this every day of the week. Also over there on the right, a couple of other videos that you might enjoy if you enjoyed this one. And thank you for watching.